Mike Pompeo, Fox News contributor, former Secretary of State. Good morning to you, Mr. Secretary. Good morning, Steve. Good to be with you all. Good to have you. So the administration can't figure out why the migrants are coming. I think it's pretty easy. They're coming because the administration is making it easy for them to do that. Steve, I think that's right. It's, this isn't about root crosses. We, we know why people want to come to the United States. It's a great place. It's the greatest nation in the history of civilization. The reason that they're able to come and the reason so many are actually choosing to come is because this administration has abandoned any pretense of protecting American sovereignty. Uh, they're, they're focused on sovereignty for the Ukrainian people. We should do that here at home. And they, they gave up all the good work that we had done for four years. We had laid down a set of policies that had slowed down people coming across the border. And Steve, importantly, slowed down fentanyl and drugs that are impacting our communities all across America from coming across the border as well. And we should never forget, there's a lot of ungoverned space in Mexico where terror threats are very real if we don't know what's coming in and out of our country. It's, it's not that difficult to do. The administration just needs to be serious about it. And apparently they've just given up. The progressive elements inside of their party want open borders, and that's what we've got today. Uh, it's incredible because uh, the Chinese are giving fentanyl to the Mexican cartels who are poisoning us. So together, they're helping to destroy America at a dizzying rate from middle class uh, on down. But I think it's, uh, I want to get you to weigh in on the fact that Russians and Ukrainians, uh, people from Europe, are now coming to our border in record numbers. If that happens when well, you're as Secretary of State, how, and, and when you have the Vice President go down to Honduras, which he says the root cause of the problem, with private money that she raised to help Honduras rebuild their economy, how do you feel about the way they're attacking some of the challenges at the border from all these different countries? Brian, it's one thing. It's fine if we want to provide humanitarian assistance to some country. But that is separate from the importance and the, the project, which is protecting American sovereignty and protecting our border, not just our southern border, but ports, too, where folks come in and just overstay visas. We had a comprehensive program aimed, aimed at this. It was pretty straightforward. If you come here and seek asylum, fair enough, you're, you're not going to stay here while you do. Uh, and we told these folks you're going to remain in Mexico. And what happened when we did that was pretty clear. It shut off the spigot. The magnet was turned off. And we had largely supported ICE and CBP in a way that enabled them to protect American sovereignty. These, these drugs, these weapons, all of this stuff coming across the border is in everyone's best interest who hates America, who wants American decline. We ought to protect our country in a way that we know how to do and is easily within our reach. I want to ask you about Afghanistan because the United Nations says that there are credible allegations that 100 former um, former Afghanistan government officials, troops, and those who worked with coalition forces have been killed uh, by the Taliban since the U.S. troop withdrawal. Uh, devastating news. Not surprising, though. But these people were killed because they worked with the United States. What do we do about this? Carla, when you leave friends and allies and Americans behind, this is the kind of thing that happens. I've seen that U.N. reporting, but I also have uh, firsthand knowledge that this has taken place. Uh, we still have folks who want to get out of that country, folks who supported our soldiers, our sailors, our diplomats, our intelligence services while we were there. They helped us take down terror plots against the United States for years and years and years. And when this administration uh, ripped up the Trump administration's plan and abandoned those people, this is exactly what one would expect would happen. To your point, Carly, uh, this is not surprising that the bad guys are acting in this way to take vengeance on those who fought against them for years when they have virtually unfettered control inside of their country. Mr. Secretary, let's talk about another hot spot, and that is what the heck is going on with Ukraine and Russia as well. There have been diplomatic negotiations, apparently. Doesn't seem like much is going on. Yesterday, uh, Ned Price, who is a State Department spokesman, uh, clashed at locked horns with the Associated Press reporter, Matt Lee, about, you know, what's happening? What are you doing? Uh, watch this. Did the Security Council actually do anything? Uh, Matt, uh, this was not about uh, a resolution. It was not about a vote. Uh, this was about an exposition of the facts. And hasn't Sh there been an uh, expositions after expositions after expositions Matt, of this going we, back we are, we are months not, now? We are not you, you, you yourself get up here every single day and talk about, or whenever you get up here, I'm going to say, I mean, just when, when you're briefing, you get up here and you talk about the G7, you talk about the EU, you talk about NATO, you talk about, you know, and. Uh, any, any, any number of international fora sure. that where this stuff has actually come out and been agreed on. Matt, we are not going to say, apologize for engaging in robust okay. diplomacy. 
Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, he, the reporter for the Associated Press has been there a very long time. He knows what he's talking about. To a lot of people, it looks like the administration is doing too much talking and not enough doing. The most important word in that conversation was talk. That's what the reporter kept referring to, talk, talk, talk. In the end, uh, Vladimir Putin understands deeds. Uh, his oligarchs, the people who are around him, need to understand that they'll be cut off from the things that they love, traveling to London and Paris and to the United States, all, all the things that these folks value, they need to know are being held at risk. But what they have seen, Carla, we were talking about Afghanistan. We, we opened talking about our border. They've seen weakness, a leader who's not prepared to defend the things that matter most to the American people all across our country. I don't know if we've been watching, but prices of wheat, red, red, red winter wheat that comes out of Ukraine and Russia are beginning to become destabilized. Mm -hmm. 30% of that comes through the Black Sea right south of Ukraine. These are the kind of things American presidents have always protected. This one doesn't seem prepared to. And when it's a talk, 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 the Russians will understand act, act, act. So how do you feel, and some people don't have a problem with this, but Macron seems to be on his own uh, with the so-called Normandy group. Uh, we have our vice, our secretary of state talking to uh, Lavrov today. We have Vladimir Putin talking with the president of Hungary. Does it bother you, and it might not, that the U.S. and NATO and the EU seem to be on, on different uh, conference settings? needs to be together. It needs to be. This is the thing President Biden promised he'd deliver. He says, we're back. America's back. Our European friends will love us again. It's not about being loved. It's about being respected. We need the Germans, the French to get on board with the American effort to push back against Vladimir Putin. When there's a gap, when there's a space, Brian, you know this story well, when there's a place to run, Vladimir Putin will find that lowest point of resistance and he'll build a Nord Stream 2 pipeline. He'll threaten the Ukrainians. He'll do just exactly the kind of things that impact people all across the United States of America. Yeah, well, there, you know, right now it's a big guessing game. And some foreign policy experts say that Vladimir Putin isn't going to invade Ukraine uh, during the Olympics because he doesn't want to outshine um, his best friend in China. Um, and then others say that it's eminent. So when do you think um, this is going to happen if it does? And what does that mean for the American people? So predicting timelines is very difficult. Uh, Xi Jinping and Putin certainly have a, a common alliance, but they're not particularly close in that sense. Uh, that we shouldn't take our eye off the ball either. We're going to hold a genocide Olympics where athletes are going to be forced to be muzzled for weeks while they're on the ground in Beijing, presenting real risk to them. Uh, for the American people, uh, it matters because if the United States is weak in the world, uh, the, the dollar is the reserve currency is risk, could raise interest rates, we could have energy prices skyrocket in the United States as well. We need stability in these places, and the United States has the capacity to achieve that if it will just do the right things and uh, deter aggression in the way that we did for four years. Sure. Of course, uh, before you were Secretary of State, before you ran the CIA, you were a congressman from the great state of Kansas. That's why you know about the price of winter wheat. When, when you look <laughs> at, at the, you know, we've been talking about how the administration yeah. has been handling various foreign affairs. What about domestically? You know, our lead story this hour uh, and last hour is crime. And it does not seem like this administration is putting the same kind of emphasis on crime that a lot of people would like to see them do. Steve, much like in foreign policy work, they put climate ahead of everything else. Yeah. Uh, here they've put uh, the idea that can't we all just get along and refusing to make sure that bad guys are put in jail in the way that we always know we have to do not only to deter the particular individual and take them off the streets, which is just common sense, but to make clear that it's unacceptable to raid a CVS or a Walgreens. Uh, we saw this back from the summer of 2020 when the progressive movement allowed these riots to take place in cities all across America. And they said, well, this is just people venting. This is unacceptable in the United States. We have a responsibility to protect every American citizen and local law enforcement, right. state law enforcement officials need to be given the power to do so and district attorneys need to prosecute to them to the full extent of the law. You remember um, when you were Secretary of State, uh, CIA Director first, uh, that when you brought up things like, I think that the virus, COVID-19, came from a lab, uh, you were marginalized like Tom Cotton or taken down from YouTube. Uh, now we find out that not only was there something substantial to that, even the people in the know thought of that, and they were told basically to, they were told to muzzle up 
for the good of science. And this is something that's going to be expanded in investigation. Here's one quote, Dr. Nikolai Podrovsky of the Flinders University of Medicine professor. He said this, it's shot from every direction from people who we now know are actually thinking exactly the same thing, but have chosen to say the opposite, which is extraordinary. It's taken two years for that to finally come out and be exposed. And what they're talking about is these scientists who said, I think this came from a lab leak. And then quickly a conference call was put together uh, by Fauci and his boss, Francis Collins, to say, guys, let's get on the same page. This happened naturally. In fact, Fauci said it last week on a podcast. This came out naturally. Bring us inside the mind of science and international relations. I can tell you this, Brian. In spring of 2020, it was clear to me personally, and I think to a large number of people who had access to the data, that this almost certainly came from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. I said it publicly in the spring. I think it was March or April of 2020. Uh, you're right. We were pilloried, and now you're seeing this un be unpacked. I don't know the details of what was going on inside the medical community and the U.S. government medical community, but it is now very clear that Dr. Fauci knew that there was U.S. money going to the Echo Health Alliance, almost certainly to be performing gain-of-function research inside of China, probably to evade U.S. restrictions. There's a lot more to learn. It still matters, Brian. It matters to the American people. Of course. Don't forget, that lab is still open and operating inside of China today. Right. Mick, uh, Mick, uh, Mick Mulvaney said, as he was, uh, I think he was chief of staff at the time, he said, the president didn't know about this. He didn't know about the exchange between the scientists, didn't know about any of that. How unbelievable is that? It, it is unbelievable that you had senior medical officials, U.S. government officials that weren't sharing with the senior leaders of America what they knew about what's likely the cause of what we've now seen uh, kill millions of people across the world, hundreds of thousands here in the United States, and do untold damage to American society. Yeah, uh, let alone four- and five-year-olds we're still dealing with who still don't Amen. know their ABCs because of it. Uh, it's killed, it will have killed uh, close to a million people in the United States. It, it is terrible. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. We know you got to go today. Thanks thank for you, Steve. starting Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Carly. Thanks, Brian. Thank you so much. Thanks for starting with Fox and Friends. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.